You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore daddy. So today, as you could probably figure out by the title, uh, yesterday I did a interview with Mr. Matt Ramage. The family was out camping, so I had an opportunity to, uh, you know, do some extra stuff that I can't usually do, and it gives you an opportunity to hear some other voices other than mine. If you are interested in watching the video version of this, because, you know, (laughs) I had several hours to prepare for this, and then he's like, all right, I'm ready, and then I basically just sat down and was like, all right, so how do I do this? So I, I uh, I just did a video interview and then converted it into audio, but the video is still there, it's in the Facebook group. I also messed that up and threw it up on my normal Facebook page, as opposed to doing a live stream in the Facebook group, so that was awkward. Because as I'm doing a live stream, I'm seeing, like, likes from my aunts. Like, oh, what are you doing? It's like, oh, no. It was a good day, though. It was it was fun. Completely lost my voice at the end of it. But it's not about me anyways. And if you don't know who Matt Ramage is, you probably don't spend time on uh, on social medias too much. But he's a real, real good dude. And I thought it would be kind of fun to, to chat with him a bit. So anyways, before I lose my voice for the second time... I'm sure you guys are uh, all grown up and can find the links if you want uh, anything, whether it be from merchandise, supporting the channel, um, as always, leave an iTunes review, whatever. Phone number's there if you want to text or call in. Otherwise, we're going to take a little break. And, w- and oh, See? There it goes. Oh, man. I'm choking on the air. We'll take a break, and we'll get into the interview. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple, just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place and you can get the app and try it out for yourself so go ahead and test drive u.s cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days that's u.s cellular built for us terms apply awards based on open signal independent data so go to uscellular.com for all the details all right, we're we're live here with uh, Matt Ramage. What's going on, Matt? Hey, not much. How's it going? Thanks for having me. <clears throat> no, it's pretty good. I, uh, I I I got something in my throat, so I'm already messing this up. <clears throat> so, Mr. Matt Ramage, been a fan of yours on uh, Twitter for a long time, but then I was like, all right, let me see what this Matt Ramage guy is all about, because he's got like three thousand followers, and that's like a little bit ahead of me. So I checked out your Instagram. Do you really have 40,000 followers on yeah. Instagram? Yeah. What? But, like, the reason that I actually got started, because okay. I used to do Packer memes. Yeah. My Instagram was Packers memes. And then I uh, I just switched it, because I was like, this is boring. 
and I, I, at that time I forget what I had, like thirty thousand or something. So then I just switched and started making stupid videos, like my jacked up eyes, you know, making right, right. And doing the things. And then it kind of just people liked it. Some people like followed me like instantly, like what is this? And <laughs> I kind of explained what I was doing, like you know. And then it just kind of like took off, and then Facebook I have like seventy thousand. And Jeez. it's just fun. I mean, well, all, most of those is because of the meme page. No, that's cool. It's easier to get. Like, I'm not any of them. You know, I'm just, I'm just a regular Packer fan. And I just, yeah. some people like it. Some people don't. Like, even just before I got on you, like, there's people who tweet me that do not like me at all. <laughs> that's crazy. Even Packer fans. Wow. Like, they don't like me. Well, that, it's kind of cool that I, I probably – I'm just going to say it this way. I get less hate mail than you. So uh, yeah. that's yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> Even like Bear fans, like uh, last year, week one, I was uh, I was drinking, watching that Packer Bear game where Rodgers went down. And I I was like ready for a long I was like, oh, my God, this season just started. Rodgers is hurt. We're going to lose this game. I was all bummed. So I'm just drinking. And then uh, they ended up coming back and winning, obviously, Rod. And I made this video that I shouldn't have made. And I was like, what now, Bear fans? And I was saying all this stuff. And, like, I had, like, death threats from Bear fans. They're like, I'll kill you. <laughs> I hate you. And... What? <laughs> yeah, like, Bear fans do not like me. I mean, gonna... some, like, I actually get along with some. But uh, there's a few out there that do not like me. That's cr- So they're going to... All right. That's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm just... I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure this thing's going live here. But anyways, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through the draft. I want to go through our season a little bit and then talk about our roster and just see kind of what your thoughts were on it um, just to kind of get going. So to start with, so I did a live stream um, for a lot of the, you know, Packer fans on my podcast and whatnot. And I can sell Darnell Savage pretty easily, but I can't really sell Rashawn Gary super easily. What did you think when you heard Rashawn Gary getting drafted at 12 overall? I was really surprised, but I'm not, I'm not a huge college guy. Yeah. I don't know like a lot about these guys. So after they got drafted, it's kind of like when I dug in and when I looked, looked at like highlights and stuff, I'm not one to like break down film either, but like I I watched, but, and, and people who I listen to people who know more than I do. I hear both. I hear like he could be great because in college he was like double and triple team in the NFL. Obviously they can't do that, especially with the other players that the Packers picked up on free agency and to the draft. So like I'm hopeful, but like I really don't know. Right. So all right, let's move on to number two then because I'm pretty jacked up about Darnell Savage, and I I know you did an interview with one of these guys, but Darnell Savage supposedly. Super crazy fast, and I'm I'm not trying to get super super. See, that's the hard thing too is, like I'm trying to be kind of cool about it, and I don't want to be too much of a homer. But the one name that keeps coming up is Earl Thomas, and I'm <laughs> I would yeah. love to have I would love to have an Earl Thomas on our team. But what what do you think about Mr. Darnell Savage? And I, I know you don't watch film, I don't either too much. But like, how jacked are you about uh, having a guy that's that fast? And I know you're a big ha ha guy. And haha, ha, I'm listen. And this is another thing you don't know if you don't listen to the podcast too much. Outside of you, I think I'm the only person that's been defending haha ha for like the yeah. longest time. I've been trying to get people to understand he's not that bad, but I'm still pretty jacked up about getting some good safeties with Amos. And now we got Darnell Savage. What do you think about getting Mr. Darnell at 21? I think that that's a great pick. My thing I see, like with his speed and with Amos, it'd be great to have two guys back there that are like just ball hawks and just good at good at playing safety and don't have a guy who, you know, is a corner playing safety. But I, I'm pretty jacked from like everything that I hear. I think he's going to be a beast. Yeah, man. No, he's, he, he looks pretty awesome. And it, it's not just the speed, but he looks like a player too. He's a ball hawk. He's getting all those picks and everything. I think the Packers need some of that. Getting, yeah. get, get, get the ball back in Rogers hands, man. Yeah. Cause all, like all the smart people that I've been watching and listening to, they say that you know, he he could have it all. Like he could just be a beast. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I don't know if we're gonna go all the way through this because some of these guys, you know, whatever. But Elton Jenkins' offensive line overall, like, so we added a lot of guys to that offensive line. I don't know what you thought 
prior to this going into the offensive line, but I kind of felt like we needed a little bit of help, and I feel like we added a lot of bit of help. So with the run game and Aaron Jones and everything else, how jacked are you to have a guy like Elton Jenkins on the team to really get this, you know, get 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 kind of that trenches thing going, you know what I mean? We, we haven't had that too much. We're more of a, you know, air it out kind of thing, but how much are you kind of jacked to just smash it down somebody's throat a little bit? No, I, I'm actually really jet because I think when you have a great quarterback, a lot of times they just focus on the pass. Like Aaron Jones last year was not used enough. We didn't run the ball enough. I wanted to see them really have a balanced offense and be able to just run the ball when needed. And, you know, it gets, certain teams can just stop the pass, but they're weak on the run. But without a good offensive line, you, just, you really can't do nothing with it. So I, I want to see what Aaron Jones can do when he's got some help and just really run the rock with him. Yeah, for sure, man. All right. So then, so I had, and I'm not a big, like, I mean, I love the draft, but I haven't, I'm not a a scout or anything, but I had like five or six guys that I really, really liked. One of the guys was Jay Sternberger. And again, I'm trying not to be a homer, but I was super jacked about this guy. What do you think about Jay Sternberger that we got in the third round? Because I really think that he can be something special. I, I mean, and, and again, I don't know. Maybe you think uh, we're gonna get. We already got a bunch of guys. We don't really need Jace. But what do you think about him and Aaron Rodgers paired up for the next five, six, seven, eight, fifty years? I, I love the. I, I like I say, like I don't know a lot about him before the draft, but I love the just an, an, another weapon, and I, I think you can never have enough tight ends. I mean, within reason, but like I, I like that. To be able to have two tight ends on the field that are both capable of doing like crazy, you know, going across the middle, catching balls, also be able to block. So I, I don't know a ton about him, but I, I love having that, that big tight end. All right. So now we're getting into the big, big stuff here because Mr. Hotshot over here, Mr. Matt Ramage, has done an interview with our fifth round pick, Mr. Kingsley Kiki. So I'm just going to shut my mouth and let you talk for a little bit. Tell me what you think and what you heard from Mr. Kingsley Kiki. How jacked are you about him? But also, what did you find out about him as a as a person and as a new Green Bay Packer? To me, he, he seems like uh, like he's determined. Like he he wants the ball out. He uh, he, he seemed he seemed a little a little quiet. Like he was. Uh, I'm not sure if he was nervous because I, I sure was. But, <laughs> but he seemed like someone who really wants to put in work. A lot of respect for uh, the guys. I think I think uh, Daniels is the one he. Because I I asked him who, who he's most looking forward to work with, and who's look. And, uh, he said Mike Daniels. He said he and uh, he really wanted to. He, he basically was saying he wants to watch these guys learn, get better. I think that he's gonna be. You know, if he's because I don't know a lot about the guys, like I said, but like if, if he's able, he will. I think that he's really determined and wants to learn and really, you know, do his part. Yeah, man. So I'm just going to round out the last couple picks because, you know, you get to the end of the the, uh, the draft, it gets kind of bunched up or whatever. But we got a cornerback, we got a running back, and we got a linebacker. Kadar Holman, cornerback, Dexter Williams, running back, and Ty Summers, linebacker. So which of these guys are you a little bit excited about? And then um, um, I, I don't know if you got any, any plans to get any of these guys on your show, but – um, it, it, I don't know if you have any thoughts about Kadar Holman, cornerback out of Toledo, Dexter Williams, running back out of Notre Dame. He's got a really, really great story. I'm sure you saw his video. And then Ty Summers, who looks like a pretty athletic guy out of uh, Texas Christian. So what are your thoughts on these last three guys, later round guys, but do you think they can contribute and whatnot? Uh, Ty Summers is actually interesting to me. I actually asked him to come on my podcast. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen, but uh, – I actually like, like, I don't like to say, I don't know a lot about him, but like I was watching video and he's like one of the person that I was, I ended up watching like some long highlight video of him. And I think, you know, he, he looked good, but it's hard to tell if like with college, will it transfer to the NFL? And especially with these late picks, like, you know, Tom Brady was a late pick. Like there's a lot of players that were late picks that ended up being great players. So sometimes that's where you find like Donald Driver was a really late pick. So I, I'm hoping that because if, if you hit on the early picks that you should, and then you get you hit on those late picks, that's when you really build a great team. Right. 
Some people take the straight path in life. But at Arizona State University, we respect your twists and turns. They make our online students more driven to excel in their professional lives. That's why our personalized suite of services empowers you with innovative resources and staff that sticks with you. Make your next turn with one of our 300-plus programs at ASU, number one in innovation for nine consecutive years. Visit us at asuonline.asu.edu to learn more. All right, so I want to transition now out of the draft, and let's start talking about the season because one of the things I've been saying, and it's kind of crazy because, so, okay, last year we had Bears, we had the Vikings, we had the Packers, we had the Lions. Not the way we'd like it to go, but that's just the way it was. I think if you look at which teams got better, you could say it was the Lions, Packers, Vikings, Bears. So, in my opinion, it's just wide open. You know what I mean? Like, oh, NFC yeah. North, completely wide open. The Lions have done a lot to grow. Packers have done a ton to grow. Vikings kind of stay the same. Bears, I think, are going backwards. So, looking at the NFC North, I know Packers obviously probably – you know, ahead in your mind, but what do you think about the NFC North and where, where are you at on that? I think like just putting the Packers aside, I think the Lions, they have potential to, to really, like, really take a step. I, I like Matthew Stafford. I think he's a great quarterback. So if they build a team around him and I think that they could do great things with, with the Vikings, I don't know. I really don't trust Kirk Cousins at all. I think like they had that great defense a, few, a couple of years ago. Well, they still have a good defense, but I kind of see the Bears that same way, where they have this great defense, high expectations. They got to the playoffs, didn't do anything, and then they kind of fell back. And I'm hoping the Bears do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> because they spent a lot of money on Cleo Mack. Like last year, and I, but the Trubisky, I don't think he's a horrible quarterback. He's a good quarterback. So they could, you know, I think mean, they're definitely, it's, it's hard for me to say that. But yeah, no. <laughs> I think this the, the, the North is wide open. And no, I that's favor the Packers. Obviously, I think the Packers right. did huge things. They got a new coach. I'm hoping that the coach, you know, brings some excitement into the locker room, and they really are ready to play with the uh, Preston Smith, both Smiths, with Amos, and then the draft. I think that there's the Packers could be really great, and who knows if maybe they could underperform. But I think that it's anyone's division. But I, I would lean towards the Packers because I'm a homer. No, I I, I agree. I, I think the Bears are going to fall off and. The only disagreement I have is I think Trubisky's garbage, but uh, you, <laughs> I think he's functional. He's got he can uh, he he can run around too a little bit. No, and, yeah, for sure. So I'm 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 still scared of him because it's only been two years and he could still have that third year where all of a sudden he becomes a freak. So I don't want to like pop off at the mouth too much, but so far I'm not scared of him. And I think if he stays the way he is, we we'll, we'll be all right. But no, I mean the bear the bears are they're scary. The Vikings have got some potential. The Lions, everybody wants to talk trash like they're garbage, but, man, they've they've made some steps. They're going into their second year with their head coach. I don't know, man, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, all right, so I want to do real quick a speed round. We're going to go through the Green Bay Packers, and I just want to get your thoughts. First of all, quarterback Aaron Rodgers, what are your thoughts? I mean, it, it sounds silly to say because obviously whatever, but for those of you that don't know Matt Ramage, um, what are your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? Because believe it or not, that's actually a controversial topic right now. I like I, to me, he's the best quarterback in the league. He, Preach I think it, brother. he still has it. He and people are talking about like he, you know, he's not as good. I mean, it depends who you talk to. But like, I think that injury, he'll recover from it. He's going to be the same old Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, a year older. But I have full faith in Aaron Rodgers could be the MVP this year. I have, I would never doubt Aaron Rodgers. No. No, I, I look forward to all the doubters because it's just more people to look dumb in a minute. Yeah. All right. So that so that was the easy <laughs> that was the easy question, Aaron Rodgers. Let's get on to something a little more complicated. Wide receiver. Devontae Adams by far. For, let, let's start with Devontae Adams. Do you put him top five? Yeah, I definitely put him top five. All right. I think he's I would say underrated, but people are starting to see now. And I even when Aaron Rodgers was hurt like a couple years ago, he he still had over 10 touchdowns. Like, people don't realize, like, how good he was doing before, you know, he blew up. But he didn't have Aaron Rodgers. And last year, he really kicked off. I think this year he's going to ball out. I think he has high expectations for himself. And I think I, I really think that he's going to blow it up this year. Yeah. No, I, you know, 
I, I hate saying that because I don't know if I put him top five just because I respect so many guys. But, you know, he, he's an absolute freak. And I, I really hope that he can definitively put himself in that category for me. But either way, he's a freak and I, I just whatever. But the more complicated thing now, outside of Devontae Adams, how do you feel about the guys that we got after that? Because we didn't draft any wide receivers. So Brian Gutekunst, pretty jacked up about our wide receivers. Equinemius St. Brown, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Geronimo, Jamon, uh, Trevor Davis, Jay Kumro, Alan Lazard, all these different guys. We got Jawill Davis. What do you think about the rest of our wide receivers? I, I, I know that a lot of people are nervous, and it all depends like, if, if they stay healthy. But I, I think Geronimo Allison is going to have a good year. I think these guys are functional. like They're capable of one of them, two of them maybe can pop off, have a great season. But – like, if, if there's an injury, I'd be very concerned because the depth. Um, yeah. But I, I, don't, I, I think that, that they could be all right, especially, like, when you have a guy like Devontae Adams or someone that's really good at any position, there's, those guys underneath are really learning. So, if, like, they're hanging out with them, like, they're listening. If they're capable, they can do it. And I, I, I have high hopes for John and Allison this year, too. Yeah. All right. Next up, halfbacks. Aaron Jones, let's start with that. Same as same as Devontae. He's clearly the number one. Aaron Jones, what, what do you think – what are your expectations for Aaron Jones this year? Well, I think if, if they really use him, which I think they will, I think, I think he could have a great year. I mean, I don't think that he's like – in this offense, he's not going to pop off for 2,000 yards or nothing. But I think that he can – you know, I, I have full faith that – he can handle the job. I think yeah. I, I, I've talked to him a few times because I asked him to be on my podcast. So I'm a little <laughs> to some of these guys because like, I, I've talked to him and they've been cool to me. Yeah. But I really have high hopes for him. Yeah, right. No, he, he's an absolute set. All right. So let's move on from the easy part. Jamal Williams. Now, I think Jamal and Jair, those are some of the guys I really, really like them. Just personality. I could care less about the football. Take the football away. Jamal is one of those guys I would love to have on this team just because I love that guy. What what, what do you think about Jamal Williams as a as a running back as like a number two? Well, I think that him and Aaron Jones, I think are a good uh, good team, and I love, and I agree. Jamal Williams is, is is a good guy. He's another guy that I've talked to a little bit, but I, I think that that he's a good guy, and I think that he with him, I think he's a great backup. I think he's a great number two. I think he's yeah, great. yeah you know, mixture in there. All right. Um, so I'm going to skip fullback because I just don't, I'm not going to talk about that. Tight end. No, <laughs> if this is a different podcast, maybe tight end. Um, we got Jimmy Graham, but then we also got, so we got Jimmy Graham and Mercedes. Those are like the veteran guys. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this for a real long time, but we also got Jay Sternberger. Who's a new guy. We also got Robert Tanyan. What are your general thoughts about our tight end situation? I think that the tight end, the whole tight end situation is about as much depth as we've had in a long time. Yeah. Like, uh, you seen Tanyan last year break one off. Uh, I, I'm not sure how much looks he'll get. I think it, it's going to be tough with so many, you know, with uh, with all of them. Like Jimmy Graham, a lot of people say he's getting older. Like, I don't know. I think you'll have to wait and see to see like what he can really do yeah. with his age. But I, the same thing with Mercedes Lewis. I don't, how old is he? I don't even know. He's up to 33 ish. I don't know. Yeah. He's up and, there. and he's more of a blocking guy. He's a bit but, of a locker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, they're probably going to try to get the young guys in there too. I just, I think it'd be very competitive and everyone's going to step their game up if they want to be on the field. Right. All right, so we're just going to do offensive line as a group because I don't want to do centers because obviously Corey Lindsley's the man. But we've got some new blood, especially a guard. I think guard is going to be a crazy competition. So we got Justin McRae, who it's kind of crazy because I know you don't listen to her all that much, but uh, like last year I was very anti-Justin McRae. Then everybody caught up and they were like, oh, I hate Justin McRae. And then he kind of had a decent year, especially compared to you know Byron Bell. And I was like, I don't know, Justin McRae's okay. So now we got Justin McRae, we got Lane Taylor, we got Billy Turner, we got um, – who else we got? We got Cole Madison, we've got Elton Jenkins. we got a lot of guards going on right now. 
And that's not even really – and I don't really want to touch on it too much because I think Brian Balaga is underrated. I think he's a really, really good tackle. But there's also some talk about maybe Brian Balaga could be in competition. How, how, how are you feeling about this competition? We got an offensive line going on. I, I think competition is always – Yeah, great. right. But our offensive line has always been that we've had good pieces, but as a group it seemed like they just weren't uh, great. So it would be interesting to see if, if these guys step up and we actually have a full, complete offensive line and they stay healthy and really uh, help with the run and, you know, pass protect. Yeah, and, I, and the cool thing about it for me is we kind of let that erode a little bit. But if you think about the best Packer teams we've had, and I'm, you know, not super old or whatever, but going back to the Brett Favre days, great offensive line. You think about the Super Bowl Packers, fantastic offensive line. So it'd be kind of nice to get back to that and kind of just rejuvenate that a little bit. Yeah, but, the offensive um, line is very important. Like it's, oh, yeah. And I'm not great at, like, judging offensive linemen. Like, I kind of, no. like, you know, because, like, I don't know that position real well. But, like, I mean, I do, but you know what I mean. I'm not, like, uh, an expert by any means. But, yeah, I, I think that they have potential. And I'm hoping that they're, they're, as a group they're really good. Yeah, but you know we need it. <laughs> yeah. That's for so sure. Much, yeah, all <laughs> needs to stay up. Yeah, right. All right, so let's let's flip over to defense. I'm just going down the line here. Another pretty crazy I, – I don't know. It maybe isn't crazy to some people, but to me it is. Cornerback. First of all, let's start again. Number one guy, Jair, Jair Alexander. How jacked are you about this guy? What do you think he can be? Dude, I, I, I watched him last year. I was so jacked. Yeah. Like, he's, this, he's so young. And I've heard wide receivers that, that we played against last year said, like, this dude's going to be a star. Yeah. I think he could, you know, potentially in years to come be one of the best corners in the league. Like, he, he's – his just, like, his energy level, even if you take away the play, I just love how his energy is just so – he's just so, you know, energetic and he's all over yeah. the place. And I love his attitude. I, I, yep. just, I just love him. That's – see, <laughs> with Jair, the, the thing I love is he's got the full spectrum. On one hand, if you look at, like, the interviews or whatever, he's, like, the nicest human being in the world, which is awesome, and it's, like, it fits with that Green Bay thing. At the yeah. same time, and I talk about this in my podcast, one of my favorite memories of him, he had a, a tight end pushed him a little bit, and he turned around and punched him right in the neck. He just <laughs> – he does not mess around. So yeah. he's got, like – he's he's a really great person. He, he kind of reminds me of Mike Daniels in that way, just like a really, really good dude. But, like, if you try to mess with him, he's going to punch you right in the neck. Yeah. It's just yeah, like, I, I, I love that. I, I yeah. Love just that. Just, the, you know, just, like, bring it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, he, he's he got the full spectrum. And I think we got a couple of guys like that. I'm super excited. But beyond Josh Jair, though, it gets a little bit complicated because we got a bunch of guys that maybe could be good and a lot of, a lot of competition. So we got Josh Jackson. We got Tony Brown, a lot of people like. We got Kevin King. So what do you think about the corners overall? Like, is it, for you, is it like Jair and then like, I don't know, or are there a bunch of guys that you're like, no, these guys are legit? I think if Kevin King can stay healthy. Yeah. Like, that could be, that, that'll that be huge. Yeah. Because when you factor all it in together, like, I think that they got a lot of good pass rushers now and that the safety positions are locked in. So if you have good corner. But if Kevin King goes down, I don't know about the the depth at that point. Right, thing. right. Yeah, depth could be an issue. But, I mean, it, as long as these guys can take a step, we could have one of the better units out there. I mean, oh. they were all drafted kind of early. We got Kevin King was, like, the first pick in the second round. Josh Jackson should have been a first-round pick, and he fell to us in the second. So, potential is definitely there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, actually, I, I like Josh Jackson. Yeah, and we got – we. I don't know where he's planning on playing, but we also – we still got Tremont on this team. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got Tremont Williams, yeah, I, I man. I forget about him sometimes. I know. I, he, I think he's a stud, man. I, I think the part of the reason we forgot is because we pushed him to safety. That yeah. dude's a pretty good corner, man. I don't know how good he is as a safety, yeah. but if we – I think it's good just as veteran leadership. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. Third, I think that would be huge just yeah. to have someone that sees stuff and can, you know, point out. I think it's good to have – you know, a veteran that can, because a coach can't teach everything, you know, you got to have right. someone on the field that can say, hey, watch for this, watch for that, you know, for these young guys. Yeah, no, I think he could be a stud for sure. All right, so speaking of safety, prior to free agency in the draft, it was like we are in kind of 
a little bit of trouble. I'm, I'm a little bit higher on Josh Jones than most people, but um, I still thought we were in trouble. But we got Adrian Amos. He was one of my favorite guys in free agency. Then we went out and got Darnell Savage. Josh Jones is kind of going to be that little that that nickel linebacker kind of guy. How are you feeling about the safety so far? I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm stoked about it because I'm Jack, have two man. Goal, two guys back there that yeah. are just safeties, actual yep. safeties, and uh, like I say, I'm, I'm really hoping that Savage plays like a savage. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Amos, I have high hopes for him. Like I, I was really excited. Like I don't know a ton about about Amos. I, I know that. He, you know, obviously, he played for the Bears or whatever, but uh, I, I watched a lot after they got him, and I, I like what I see. And actually, I've talked to a lot of Bear fans. They yeah, said he's great. No, yeah, no, I, he. There's a couple bitter Bear fans that want to oh, admit yeah. that he's that that they say he's not that great or whatever. But no, and, and listen, like I said, I, I'm a big I'm I'm me and you. I think are the only Ha Ha fans that I'm aware of. I think yeah. they got a good pickup with Ha Ha. I think we got a great pickup in in Adrian Amos. I think we're going to be solid there. But yeah, um, I know. The thing about Ha Ha, like in my opinion, I haven't even said this, but you see all these bear players going out in free agency and making big money. Yeah, that's why one of the reasons I think Ha Ha went there. Like I said, as my opinion, because he signed a one-year contract. That's a great defense. He plays yep. well in that defense, which I, I expect him to because they have a great front seven. Oh yeah, safety can't do it all themselves. But if he has a great year, he's going to get paid next year. Yeah, and and the the thing with Ha Ha, he was. He was a really good safety when he had Morgan Burnett next to him. Yeah, you need Morgan. That. Morgan Burnett was his leader, and he he just he was kind of like that number two, but he was a a loyal and a, a monster as a number two. You put him there in the, in the Chicago Bears defense where he's he's not like the focal point, but he can just be he can just go in there and do his job. I think he's I think he's going to do a good job, and I've been I've been trying to caution the uh, the listeners on my podcast that I think he's going to have a good year. Maybe just. Kind of cool it with the anti haha talk that you're getting a, a bust because I think he's gonna have a good year over there. But yeah, but I, uh, I, don't, been, I don't know. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think I think he's very capable of, of having a great year, especially on that defense. Yeah. But like Packer fans, sometimes when a player leaves, they just go like full throttle. Like, it hurts a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just don't do that. Like, I, I don't hate on players just because right. especially when it's not their doing. Like uh, right. Even if I don't, if there's a player who I don't like when they leave, I'm like, all right, he's gone. I don't, I don't even think about it no more. I, I don't, I don't. That's just my thing. I ain't, I ain't gonna hate on people. I right. see his Twitter. People, the way people go off <laughs> on Twitter, it's like, wow. Yeah. No, and uh, even before he left, like people were really, really down on him. And I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a PFF guy than most, but like they're real high on him, and they were, they were talking about him being as one of the better safeties, and it's like, look. I know you're going to hate to hear this, but like he did kind of a good job for us. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it, what, like four picks. No, he, and that's 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 the thing. Like, so he, you know, th- there was some some plays where it was like, okay, you probably could have put a little more effort or whatever. But like, as far as coverage, like when he left, people forget when he was there. And I don't want to make this the ha ha show, but yeah. when he was there, there weren't a lot of big plays like over the backside, you know, big deep passes or whatever. But when he left, all of a sudden, like, we, we got those old, like, you know, deep passes. Like, oh, come on, man. Who's the guy that's going to be back there and help us? But anyways, with Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage, I don't think we got to worry about that anymore. I'm super jacked about the guys we got. I yeah. think we made in, – including getting – moving on from Haha. I do think that was the right decision, even mm-hmm. though I think he's a good football player. I think we're, we're in a great spot now. I, I, I trust Gutekunst made the right decision there. But um, a little bit higher on him than most people. But – Anyways, let's um, let's move on to linebacker. Not a whole lot to talk about here because we haven't done very much. I know you talked a little bit about Ty Summers, but um, Blake Martinez and Oren Burks, man, how you feeling about going into the season with those guys? No, I, I, Blake Martinez. I, I don't know. Lately, I've been I've been hearing a lot of hate on him. But, That's uh, silly. Yeah, I, I I love me some Blake Martinez. Yeah, and uh, Oren Burks. I he's a younger guy. I think that you know. Well, I, I don't know. Like, I think that yeah, I'm hoping right. that, that, that he'll have a big year, but uh, I'm definitely high on Blake Martinez. Yeah, the cool thing is we got that. They did a lot of work with the guys up front, so that should help the linebackers so they don't have oh, to do yeah. quite as much. Yeah, so Blake we, Blake we know is going to be solid, and anybody that doesn't like Blake Martinez can, you know, whatever. I mean, just you got your own opinion. That's cool, but, I mean, he's he's more than capable of a linebacker. But Oren Burks, I'm excited, man, to see that second-year leap. He's got the athleticism. We get that defensive front that's 
going to do most of the work, and all he has to do is, like, run really fast and smack people in the mouth. Yeah, I mean, good at too. <laughs> yeah exactly. So, I mean, I, I think as long as we can just make it that his whole job is run really fast and hit the guy with the ball, I think he'll be all right. So, all right, we got two more positions here, and we'll I'll, I'll let you get out of here and get back to your family. But one of the most important, interior defensive line, and it's kind of fuzzy who goes in there, but we're going to talk about Kenny Clark Dean Lowry, Mike Daniels, Montravius, Tyler Lancaster, James Looney. There's a lot of really good guys along this defensive line. I, I kind of feel like maybe I'm being a homer, but I feel like we got a really good defensive line, man. Oh, I, I totally agree. Like, I like this whole defense. All right, I'm like, oh, yeah. all right we're good. Do what you got to do, yeah. Yeah, my, my battery is dying on my phone. It's all no, right. But, uh, no, there's uh, there, this whole defense – how it's being put together, I think it's huge. There's so much depth, like you said, on, on defensive line with these young guys mixed in with some veterans. Like Mike yeah. Daniels, if Mike Daniels stays healthy, I think this dude is an absolute monster. Like, I would not want him running anywhere near me. And yeah. I, I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah. And then uh, the biggest, like, the biggest change, and, and, and I've been saying for a while, even including last year when we tried to go get Khalil Mack, because I thought that was kind of weird, like, no, man, that's too much to go get him. Brian Gutekunst wanted him. I think Brian Gutekunst is a madman for edge rusher. He wants it real bad. He went yeah. out and got not only Zadarius, he went out and got Preston, and then he drafted with a 12 overall pick, Rashawn Gary. I think he wants pass rush real bad. So we got Preston Smith, who I think is a, a real good pass rusher. I, I do a lot of stats and stuff on my podcast. Yeah. 12% of the time he gets to the quarterback. Zadarius is about 12% of the time getting to the quarterback. Kyler Fackrell, we knew, got a, got to the quarterback a ton. You got Rashawn Gary going after the quarterback on top of our interior guys like Kenny Clark and Mike Daniels, who are 12, 13 percenters. Like, we've got five guys now across the front five that can get – so we don't have here, – here's the crazy thing. We don't have – uh, uh, one Khalil Mack. Like, we don't have that guy, and that's fine. But we got five guys that are like mini Khalil Macks. Yeah. That can go after the quarterback. That's kind of crazy, man. So, how are you feeling about like the pass rush going and smacking the quarterback over and over again? I think the, the, the fact that they have so many and they can have a really great rotation. Yeah. So they can, they're going to stay energetic. They're not going to get tired. It's not one guy doing it all. I, one of my favorites was Preston Smith, but I'm biased because I've been talking to him a little bit. Okay. Because he's actually uh, friends with Haha. They were in Washington together. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So he, when he got drafted, he kind of, we whatever, we talked a little bit. Sure. But uh, I've been watching highlights of Zadaria Smith, and I actually like him, like his whole story, like right. he bought his mom a house, and like, yep. he seems like these guys seem like really good guys. Real good guys. And I like you said, with, with that rotation, I think that this – that pass rush might be just nasty. Yeah. No, it's going to be lethal. Um, so, anyways, man, I, I really, really appreciate you coming on. We we did everything I wanted to talk about. I'm sure everybody that listens to the podcast already knows Matt Ramage, but if you don't, um, just just real quick, give me a little bit about Matt Ramage, where everybody can find you, and I'm going to let you go and get back to your family. I know you just got out of work, and I really appreciate it, man. No, I appreciate you having me on. No, but my podcast is uh, Rambling Matt Ramage. Uh, on iTunes and Spotify, SoundCloud. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Just search Matt Ramage. And uh, no, I, I love doing this stuff. Like my podcast, I, I've had some players on, but like I'm not, I'm still learning. Like you're good. Yeah. Like, I would definitely want to check out, you know, listen more because I want to, I'm trying to learn from other people who are yeah. doing it. But like I have cool guests on. If I didn't have a cool guests on, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I get so nervous. Yeah, the players. I'm trying to get better at it, and I'm trying to, like I say, watch, listen to other people, see what they're doing. Right. But, uh, no, I appreciate you having me on. No, man. Hey, and hey, you know, we'll we'll talk for a minute once we get off. But uh, anything you ever need, man, just reach out. I'm I'm not doing much, so just just shoot me any questions anytime you need. But oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Any, anyways, man. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, you you uh, have yourselves a fantastic day. All right, Bridget, you too. All right.